Hey guys, so now I'm gonna be over here talking to myself for a minute, but I really wanna keep all of this content housed in one space. So maybe some of you guys are tuning in, so I'm gonna hang out for a minute. Um, I did already write down my recipe so that I can post it after I get done streaming this. So yay. And um, yeah, I am hanging out in my kitchen. We're gonna make Chex Mix tonight. So I went and got all of my cereals. Obviously that's upside down. Hi, hi guys. Um, I am in the kitchen. I am baked baking, which is my favorite hobby ever. And I was just actually looking for my lighter. Oh, it's right in front of me. Uh, we're going to be making Chex Mix. We, um, when I say we, I mean myself and my four cats, one of which is kicking it on the other side of um, this tripod. So let's hope he doesn't knock it over. That happened earlier. Almost knocked over, um, almost knocked over some other stuff. So yay. Guys, thank you so much for coming out and um, hanging out with me tonight. I was saying earlier that I had a lot of questions today. I work at the wellness farm one day a week um, in the dispensary and I had a lot of questions today about edibles and one of the most common questions that there's a kitty coming over here oh there's nowhere for you to go buddy um <laughs> one of the most common questions that people have is they get how edibles work per se but they don't necessarily know how to dose or um kind of where to start don't knock that over jig oh, kids um so I wanted to stop by here today and when you start dosing, when you start doing edibles, small portions are ideal things that you can monitor. So the recipe I want to share today is Chex Mix because it's super easy, it's perfect for the holidays and um, it's easy to use your can of butter to that. So we're going to get started as soon as I get rid of this cat. He's going to knock stuff over. Jig, go. So the recipe is super simple, super, super, super simple. Um, I make my own cannabis butter. <laughs> Jig. Okay, sorry about that, guys. Um, so I do make my own cannabis butter. Do, 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 do. And I do one-eighth. No, that's not right. I do one quarter to one stick of butter. So like every stick of butter, butter, boop, boop, be doo, butter, um, I do one stick of butter to one quarter of weed because I want it to be super, super strong so that when I'm using this in baking and cooking and you're distributing this amount across a large serving that is still pretty potent, um, it makes it worth your while. So I will drop the recipe for that as well. Um, so to this point, I have already taken my, my flour, I have decarbed it for like 110 to 120 minutes, so an hour and 50 minutes to two hours at 210 degrees, and that is going to give it a very nutty aroma and smell. You'll definitely smell it um, as it's processing. Your house smells delicious for a little while. And I will take the decarbed flour. I add one stick of butter to one quarter of flour and about two cups of water into a crock pot and that's the scale. So a quarter to a stick so that you would have an ounce to a, a pound of butter. Again, um, once you process all of this, you can, it doesn't have to say that strong. You can take the very potent butter and you can mix it with straight um, regular butter and keep diluting that till you get to a point that's comfortable. Man, I'm telling you, kitties, they're the best, right? Man, Jig broke this. You guys are just going to have to look at my counter for a second while I repair. I really thought this was Jig proof. I don't know what I was thinking. There's nothing in the world that's Jig proof. If you guys don't follow my account regularly, Jig is my almost three-year-old, about to be three-year-old, just turned three-year-old, polydactyl. He's a monster. He has 24 toes, and all 24 toes are full of mischief and mayhem. So, I was saying, I've already decarved my weed. 
when I process it with the butter, I leave it in for anywhere from six to eight hours, just kind of depending on what I'm doing with my day. Um, keep it on low on your crock pot and it's really not gonna burn. You're gonna have a little bit of singeing on the edges, but that's perfectly normal. Once you have processed it through, you strain it with cheesecloth and then I freeze it. That's gonna separate the oil and um, the water, obviously, obviously. Um, <laughs> so all of that has been done to render my butter. And my butter is actually no longer butter because I do take out the milk fat and the excess. Um, so this is ghee clarified butter. And I do it in these, um, I call them jello shot cups, but I mean, I know they have a, a name, but like we all know them for jello shots. I know them for jello shots. So um, you can see it's two ounces that's imprinted on the bottom. Totally can't see that here. But it's two ounces. So um, after I process my butter, I get it to where I want it to be. I keep mine really strong because I have a high tolerance and I people that I feed have a high tolerance. My friends have high tolerances. So you can take this and um, process it down with traditional ghee and continue to get a level of, of ghee that you're comfortable with in your potency. And I'll drop like some links and stuff in the comment section here because I use an online calculator to figure out how potent my product is gonna be from the ghee that I create to figuring out the potency of the Chex Mix that we're gonna make today. So Chex Mix, yay! Um, all time, hands down, one of my favoritest, like, I still think of it as like a holiday snack, like, when I was growing up, it was something that my mom would make, because you can make it in huge batches, it makes the whole house smell delicious. I need to bake, to get baked, so, excuse me. So now, it's one of my favorite things to make, and um, it's great in batches. Da, 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 da. What's next? Um, <laughs> it's great in batches. Oh, because um, I talk to a lot of people that are new to the edible world, and one of the great things about this is because we're going to be, I keep saying we because I think it's like a collective we, like you and I are going to be doing this, but I mean, my cats are over here eating on the other side of the counter, so it's they and I. Um, because we're making a recipe that has definitive numbers of things, it's not like a chili or a spaghetti sauce or, you know, um, a, a commodity style dish. It's something that you can actually measure out per ration and really zero in on what the dosage is going to be for this. So because these pieces are so tiny and you get all of this awesome information on the side about serving sizes. Um, the number of cups that are involved in that, you're able to use that math to make sure that you are dosing yourself correctly. And as always, better to start low and level up than it is to try to just charge into it because everybody is different, every strain is different, every batch of ghee is going to be different. Um, it's really important not to take that for granted and especially if you are super seasoned in the world of cannabis and you are introducing new people into it, it's very important to remember that like everybody is not going to react the same and definitely, definitely, definitely someone can be overwhelmed really quickly with edibles because it takes a minute to set in so if they don't feel it immediately they can try to eat more and then when it hits it's just like blammo and that's not really fun for anyone. I mean, it might be fun for some people, but it's not really like a great introduction into what cannabis can do for it. So, all of that being said, um, let's talk about Chex Mix, guys. I have already melted my recipe calls for, I have to um, make sure I don't lie about this because I'd hate for you guys to try this and be like, my Chex Mix is garbage because you told me wrong. Um, it's a half cup butter to start with. So because I do these guys in two ounce containers, I was able to just pull four of those and melt them ahead of time. Because it's ghee, um, I don't want to put it in the microwave. I don't really want to put anything in the microwave. But I don't want to put it in the microwave because it definitely ruins the integrity of the taste. And you just want to slowly heat that up to melt it. So like the whole time I've been talking to you guys, I've had mine on the stove top melting. So my cereals haven't been opened yet. Um, I go for the corn squares. You guys might know these as checks. I'm a budget babe, so I get the uh, Great Value brand. 
I'm going to open these up while I'm opening these up. If you guys have any questions, please uh, ask away. Um, I'll be happy to answer anything I can or send you in the right direction to find out more stuff. Or just tell me how your day was. If you don't have any questions, just tell me how your day was. Hang out with me. I'm going to open these guys. Um, I did not get wheat checks because I don't like it. It's not my favorite. I did get Cheerios because these little bastards spongy AF. They're going to suck up all the good, good, good juices. So, um, pro tip, Cheerios over wheat checks. And I also skipped out on the pretzels and the bagel chips, which are both very common for Chex Mix and party, party mix styles. The reason I did that is because they're not super absorbent. We're trying to get essentially the most bang for our buck. So we want all of the ingredients that we're using to absorb approximately the same amount of, of goodness, right? So the Cheerios are going to absorb more, so we're going to add them in last. And the checks, um, the corn squares and the rice squares are going to absorb about the same. So we're going to batch them out all together. You can add the stuff after the fact. If you want to add it before, you can. Last time I did pretzels in it when I did my, my beta test on this. I did pretzels in it and it wasn't so super. Um, they, they were fine, but they would definitely need longer to marinate. I like to do it pretty quickly. I like to sort everything through and then get it in the oven. 250, already preheating back there. Um, so yeah, I mean, this is a super easy, easy, easy thing to make. It's like something any 10 year old can make and the, <laughs> it's good. It's, um, an easy go-to snack if you want something while you're out or while you're at work or taking something to work to, um, parties and things like that. If you're somebody that deals with anxiety and that's a huge thing for me is, um, I need that buffer. And before I used a lot of vodka for that buffer. Um, but now that I'm a legal eagle with my card, it's a lot easier to just have an edible or my vape pen or something handy to uh, kind of take the edge off. So this is super for yourself, and if you have friends, um, it's a great party snack for Thanksgiving and for holidays with your friends. So, what's next? What's ah. So, let me hit a bowl, and then let me wash my hands, and we'll get started. Guys, how is your day going? No one even told me. How was your day? How was your day today? You're in my kitchen, so normally if I'm cooking and you're here with me, you're on the other side of my counter and I'm like, how is your day? Do you need a snack? So I can't really feed you guys through the phone and I can't give you anything to drink, but I can talk to you about how your day was. So Hi Shelly. Hi Bella. I'm over here talking to the kitties while I smoke. I have all my goodies over here, so um, we're gonna get started in just a second. Pretty excited to have you guys in my kitchen. Um, food is my love language. It's also what I do when I am anxious or stressed out about stuff. I'm a stress cooker. So um, this autumn has made me a little fluffier than usual, but I've mastered some new recipes. I learned to make macarons. Um, yeah, all in all, pretty awesome and I'm going to show you guys how to make awesome Chex Mix. Right meow. Speaking of meows, can you hear those monsters in the background? Those are two. There's a little monster, and there's a bigger monster. I need to get a little something to put over here so when I step out of frame, you guys can, can see it. You guys to be able to see the kitties. That would be cool. Okay. So... Um, one thing that I was doing this as many times as I have now, I don't have bowls big enough for what this calls for. This is like nine cups of cereal. So it's a pretty big batch. Um, those guys. It's a pretty big batch. So what I do is use a crock pot liner because it's food safe and it's huge. So my ghee and everything have melted. Getting my cereals ready. That's my, that's been in my head all day long. I woke up with that in my head for some reason. So, it's not working. Scissors. Okay, so the most important part of this is your butter. Knowing how much butter you're using because that's gonna tell you how potent your edibles are. I know that I have four ounces of butter. That's in there now. I'm gonna measure out my cereal, but I'm actually going to mix up my liquids first. So I have my ghee, and that is my loaded butter, and then there's one third of a cup Worcestershire. 
There is one and a half tablespoons of seasoned salt and then one tablespoon of garlic powder. So all those guys are in there. I forgot my whisk. So I'm gonna whisk it up. And then because I heated my butter really slowly, it's not going to do any damage to my bag. It's just liquefied. Make sure all of the goo is nice and mixed up well in there. And then I'm gonna transfer it to a measuring cup so that I have a little more precision on pouring it, pouring it out. So, there's that. The final yield after your butter and your Worcestershire is approximately a cup of um, yummy goodness. So the way um, I like doing this best is I have a giant measuring cup, which is like four and a half cups each. Um, I had a really great Pyrex one until I broke it a few weeks ago. And I said there's like 10 cups of cereal all together. So we're gonna load up on the Cheerios because they soak it up well. And to help all of this like integrate better and not douse some cereal and leave others of it really dry and bland, I pour like a little bit into my bag that looks like maybe a quarter of a cup. And then I'm just gonna like smash it down. The crock pot bags are really wide mouth, so they're a little tricky to navigate, but you can see, pretty heavy. Once you get that kind of rolled around in there, and then I start adding my cereal. And that seems like it does not make it as soggy as quickly. So I've got four cups of Cheerios in there. I need 10 cups all together. I'm gonna do another four cups of rice. And then I'm gonna take my stuff, and you can see here, it's already kind of starting to separate. The ghee and the powders are starting to separate. So you wanna whisk it back together, or you're gonna end up with some really gross, clumpy grossness in there. So just a little bit, a little bit across the top. And then go ahead and shake this portion up. You're gonna have a pretty hefty bubble on the bottom of your Worcestershire goodness. So right now we're at approximately nine cups. So we're gonna do one cup of the corn checks, which is the least absorbent of all of them. And I overshot that one a little bit, about one and a half, which I'm okay with. I'll leave a couple in there to snack on. And then this very last batch, squishy, squishy around so that um, all of your goodness goes in there. And you're gonna have that happen with any butter, but you're gonna have that happen with ghee especially. Um, so you just wanna make sure that you continue to keep it. I'm step on a Cheerio. Oh, those are name brand. I got name brand Cheerios. Um, so all out, I'm going to just get the last of it. Boom. And now I have this really big, yummy bag of goodness. So I'm gonna take the top and fold it down and take the edges and fold it down. And then I'm just gonna turn it upside down completely. Um, try not to shake it too hard so you don't break stuff up because they're better when they're all together. Once that's kind of shaken up, I'm going to gauge it. It looks like it might be just a little, a little wet still. So we're gonna put in a little bit more of the corn just down there on one end where it looks like maybe some pulled up. So, here's my big bag. Fold over the top, fold over the top. Double check your edges, guys. Like, this is the super easiest way, plus you get to throw it away, so less dishes. Um, but if you don't hold the top of it tightly, you're gonna have the biggest mess and so much wasted, loaded ghee on your floor. It'll just be sad, 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 sad everywhere. So, to recap, we have 10 cups of cereal, a half a cup of butter, so for me, four of these, half a cup of butter, a third a cup of Worcestershire, one and a half tablespoons of seasoned salt, one teaspoon of garlic powder, a little bit of lolly magic, and I'm going to continue to just shake this and turn, oh, that was open in the front, guys. That was almost disastrous. That's what I was saying. Got to be careful. Just busy looking at you guys. 
So that looks like it's pretty, pretty nice and, and solid now. Everything looks really nicely coated. It's all even. Yeah, yay. So, ooh, that was a big sniffer of, of Worcestershire. So um, there's not really any leftovers anywhere. There's a little bit of Worcestershire dro droppings. That sounds disgusting. Nobody wants droppings. Uh, leftovers that I just dropped in there. And I've already put parchment paper on my cookie sheet because I love parchment paper. It's seriously like the best invention in the world. And for the Chex Mix, it works a couple of ways. One, no cleanup, well, minimal cleanup. You don't have to scrub anything. Two, um, it makes it really easy to shift your mix as it bakes because you're gonna stir it like every 15 minutes. Super high maintenance, but it's worth it. So it makes it a lot easier to um, stir it and to shift it through. And you're gonna wanna make sure that you keep it in the middle of the oven um, while you're baking it through. It's not so much about damaging the mix, but damaging the THC and the ghee. So you wanna make sure that Slow and low is the way to go. Um, pretty much any time you're working with it, it's always a good rule of thumb. So now that my my goo has set here, and I talked to you guys for a few minutes, I let it set up, and it tastes delicious. I'm gonna go ahead and dump it on my tray. So again, parchment paper, BFF. I'm hoping all of this fits on one tray. I don't care. If not, you can do it in batches, or you can run two trays at the same time. It doesn't really make a difference in the um, in the way this the mix turns out if you're doing two trays at the same time. I'm just gonna take my um, my little beater there, my whisk, and flatten it out so that it's yeah, it's not all probably gonna make this one, but you just want to flatten it out so that it's one layer. Um, you want it to crisp up. Essentially, you're just toasting this with the yumminess that you put on it. And you want all of this to be the same amount of yumminess because this is a little more expensive uh, than normal Chex Mix since this is loaded butter. So you just want to take those extra steps to make sure you're creating the best product possible because it sucks to throw away eight ounces of, of loaded ghee. So there's my empty bag, yay. And this guy is a little full for one layer, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna live on the edge, guys. I'm gonna live on the edge. Um, I'm gonna stir it a little bit more, and I'm going to, um, to baby it. So it's okay, it's not super duper duper over the top. Um, I'm gonna scoop a little bit of it off and run a second batch because I don't wanna put both of them in at the same time. I'm just afraid that if I screw something up, then I screw up two batches instead of one. So that's your judgment call, man. You live your best life. So I have one layer. And I just kind of shook it down to get it all even. And she's going. I've already set my shelf so everything's golden. The four cups of goodness that I scooped off, um, I'm going to set over to the side. And when that batch finishes, which is going to finish, hey Google, set a timer for 15 minutes, please. Okay, so, um, lifesaver. So every 15 minutes, you're gonna wanna come over and stir it. I like using the beater because you kind of break up the pieces with, or you break up the layer without breaking up the pieces. Um, and using your parchment paper to just like slowly roll it slightly. I always make my parchment paper a little bit, well, quite a bit longer than it needs to be for that reason. So you can kind of like slide it, roll it, slide it, roll it, and mix it all in together. Um, I set my timer for 15 minutes, so I remember to come back and check it out and then I'll set it for another 15. And um, at the end of that, if it's still a little soft, go ahead and give it just a minute or two longer. You don't wanna wait too long because again, over baking it is the worst and you wasted all that good THC butter. So pull it, once it's pulled out, aluminum foil, wax paper, kind of whatever you would like to use. I like to use a wax paper or a saran wrap with paper towel over the top of it. Put your little yummy mix after it's all toasted. You just sprinkle it out, out of the, I just, you can't, guys can't see my hand and I still like motioned with my hand. Um, so <laughs> after it's out of the oven, 
saran wrap, whatever you want on your countertops or another cookie sheet, whatever works for you. I like it on the countertop so I can really spread it out. The better it airs out, the crispier it's going to be, the better it's going to turn out. So saran wrap down, paper towels down, and I like the paper towels because I can take them and use them as little funnels when I'm putting my goodies into bags. I just stepped on another Cheerio. Um, so yeah, that is loaded Chex Mix, and I will share the recipe with you guys. And if you don't, um, if you don't want cannabis, you can use just regular butter. Uh, this is like the bold Chex Mix, so it's a lot of Worcestershire, a heavier dose of Worcestershire, and a heavier dose of seasoned salt. So you can totally make. Is it still a version? Is it like a drink, like a virgin drink? Is it a version if it doesn't have cannabis in it? Food for thought. That's really it for me, guys. Um, I don't, I know when you guys say hang out with me for 45 minutes waiting on a beeper to beep, but I'll post a picture of it when it's done and I'll share you guys the recipe. And if you're looking for ghee, um, I will share the recipe to make your own or come see me at the Wallace Farm. We do have can of butter in stock and that's it. Do you guys have questions? Did, did you have any input? Um, did you have... Anything other than an input or a question? Is there anything other than an input or a question? Is a question or a statement? It's kind of the only two things there are, right? Yeah. So, um, I have been cooking a lot lately. I love to cook anyway, but um, anxiety cooking makes me feel better. So, I've been doing a lot, a lot of cooking and trying a lot of new recipes, and that's super exciting. Um, one of the things that I came across in the edible world is that a lot of edibles are sweet, and that's not a good fit for everyone, whether you're simply not into sweets, or you're paleo or keto, or you've had um, procedures that don't allow you to have sugar now, like whatever the situation may be, it's nice to have alternatives, and it's really nice to have alternatives that are budget friendly. So you can go in and you can get an edible on the fly. And it's just like any other food. If you get fast food, it's more expensive because you're paying a convenience fee than if you went home and made it yourself and portioned out, you know, the cost. So there's definitely a place for edibles on the go. But if you're someone that has chronic pain or you deal with issues that you don't want to smoke and you don't really find that tinctures are for you, edibles are super great. And something like Chex Mix is good for a while. So if you make a cake, you kind of need to eat it. The same with bread, it's a super fast, um, a super fast boil time. So if you're wanting to do something, you kind of want to test out edibles or you're wanting something that you can stretch out your your cannabis budget, um, this, is, this is a great go-to. Plus cereal is super cheap. So your materials that you're using are cheap to start with, which is nice. Um, I think my cereals were like, I know these are under $2 a piece and my Cheerios, because I got the name brand, um, just because they didn't have the generic in stock, I would have bought generic Cheerios, I don't care. Um, I think these were like two fifty, three dollars $3 maybe. So two, four, nine. Um, I already had the butter because I make my own, but the seasonings, Worcestershire sauce is $1.25, I think a bottle. Um, garlic powder is usually in your cabinet, the same for seasoned salt. Like, think kitten season salt doesn't go bad because I really don't even know, like, how old this is. This this came with my fiancé. When I got him, this, this came with him. So, um, it's salt. It can't go bad, right? Um, all of the ingredients are things that you have in your cabinets or are pretty accessible and cheap. So, it's a great snack. It's a great on-the-go, and it's really great for people that are first starting out. So that, my friends, is that. That's how you make loaded Chex Mix. And I will share the recipes for the things that I talked about today. And if there's a recipe that you would like to see or you have a suggestion for things that you would like to see made as elevated edibles, let me know. Um, I love to play kitchen witch. I love to play kitchen scientist, actually. More scientist than witch. I love to play kitchen scientist and um, try new things. So, and if you're interested in anything I made, DM me if you're in the Tulsa area. Normally I can get you hooked up. And if you missed it earlier, I made candies. This is like the first thing I ever learned to make like six or seven years ago. Hard candy, hard candy is really hard. 
Um, working with sugar is really challenging. There's a very small margin of error for that. So um, learning to make that and using tincture, which is also expensive. Um, yeah, no learning curve, but I figured once that, like I have mastered hard candy, like obviously the rest of this is a cakewalk and it is. Gummies are super easy. Savory edibles are really easy. I do my own coconut oil and olive oil. Um, kind of everything we eat around here is loaded now, so. But it causes, um, it, it's a great way to think about the way that you take in cannabis and the, the feeling that you're trying to experience. So for a lot of people, they're really not necessarily wanting to be um, elevated during the day, but at night, like something to help you sleep, it's great to be like, oh, this is my go-to recipe that if I eat this at dinner at 8 o'clock, 9 o'clock, 7 o'clock, um, I know in an hour or so I'm going to be wound down. I'm going to be ready to Netflix and chill for real. Um, knowing these things and not only just like, oh, hey, I really like cannabis. I, I like I like to be high or, you know, I want to try this and I hope it works. Being able to zero in on the strains that really work for you, which I'm going to talk about so much. You guys are going to be so tired of hearing about it. Um, but also the products that work for you. Not all edibles are for everyone. Some edibles are more potent than others. Some hit the body faster than others. So knowing what works for you and gets you to a point of comfort, whether it's from anxiety or pain or you're just looking for a way to be outside of yourself, there's a lot of different ways to get there and finding the way that works best for you really is a game changer. It's not a replacement for pharmaceuticals. It's not a replacement for anyone's antidepressant. Like, I am not a doctor. Those are not my decisions to make. But I do know that science shows this makes you a more relaxed person and it helps with pain and aches. And if you don't have aches and pains, you're lucky. Don't break your leg. Don't live your life. Really don't break your leg. Um, I'm excited about this journey. I'm excited to take you guys on this journey with me. I'm excited you guys are hanging out today. You're not very talkative, um, but I'm super glad you guys are here. I promise the videos will get better, um, <laughs> but this has been a lot of fun, and if you do have questions and you um, or you have requests and you just don't want to make it public, by all means, uh, slide in my DMs. Tell me whatever it is that you got going on, any questions you have, any suggestions you have, because I am happy to hear it. Two years, y'all. Two years. Listen twice as much as you speak. My kitty agrees. That's Hemingway. He's like the most vocal. So my timer will be up in just a few minutes. I will stir my batches and I will post my recipe and the results later, guys. Thanks for hanging out with me and follow me. Oh, this is the part where I tell you where to follow me, right? Follow me on Instagram at cannagirl918. Also Twitter if you're there. And you should be there if you're a fan of cannabis because it's the most user-friendly platform there is. I'll see you soon. Bye.